This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Search today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. For a long while, Nissan was the electric vehicle leader among mainstream legacy companies, having started mass production of the Nissan Leaf way back in 2010. But these days, Nissan has lost some of its EV edge, with its two main EV models, the Leaf and Aria, not selling particularly strongly against the competition. But this week, we got news of an interesting future for the Nissan brand in the EV segment, thanks to an interview between Autocar and Nissan's global VP of product planning, Ivan Espinoza. During the interview, he confirmed that Nissan is planning an all-electric version of the iconic Nissan GT-R sports car based on the Hyperforce EV concept that it unveiled last year. On board will be more than 1,000 kilowatts at the wheels and, quite possibly, a brand new solid-state battery pack. We don't have a launch date, but I really hope this happens. If you've watched our official review of the Kia EV9, you'll know that both myself and Kate Walton Elliott are big fans of Kia's largest eGMP-based EV. And it looks like we're not alone. This week, Monroe & Associates released its teardown video of the Kia EV9 battery pack, showing just how much careful planning has gone into making the boxy three-row electric SUV. In focus in its latest teardown segment, of course, is the battery pack, which the team at Monroe & Associates called, quote, a wonderful design. Built with repairability in mind, the EV9's battery pack drops from the vehicle reasonably easy with minimal electrical and cooling connections. The entire bottom of the battery pack case is a single-piece cooling plate and the modules are designed in an easily repaired way. A star all round. Polestar shocked everyone this week with a surprise change of CEOs following the resignation of its original CEO, Thomas Ingolat. And it's an interesting new hire. Stepping into the shoes on October 1st is Michael Loeschaller, a longtime industry executive who has worked at Volkswagen, Daimler, Mitsubishi, was CEO at Opel and Vinfast before then becoming CEO of Nikola, a position he left last year. While we don't know the full reasons for Ingenlad's departure, it's worth noting that Polestar's Q2 figures, released the very next day, showed an improvement on the first quarter of the year, but a year-on-year -year drop in sales and revenue, as well as massive increases in losses. While Polestar's financials are not looking good and sales hammered due to Hertz's change in direction on EVs, we think the new CEO's primary goal is pretty clear – to turn Polestar around and make a profit. In the last few years, LFP battery packs have been seen as the logical successor to NCM battery cell chemistries due to their longer lifespan, lower cost and cobalt and nickel-free construction. But now a new study published in the Journal of the Electrochemical Society suggests that while LFP cells have advantages over NCM cells, engaging in charging, especially fast charging, when the battery pack is already at a high state of charge, can cause long-term damage to LFP packs. The paper authors, which include renowned Tesla battery researcher Jeff Dahn, suggest that putting an EV on charge, especially at high currents or high temperatures, or when the battery pack is above 75% full, can cause physical changes to the anode structure within the cell, which shortens its lifespan and reduces its usable capacity. Obviously, we can't delve into a deep dive in this news roundup show, but tell us below if you'd like us to do one. We're heading to the USA next, where the US federal government has officially launched a new program to spend $148 million on repairing existing EV charging infrastructure. The program has awarded money to 24 different recipients across 20 US states, with California receiving the lion's share of the funding. While it's a shame to see some states didn't apply for funds, it's worth noting that this week we learned that since 2020, when President Joe Biden came into office, the EV charging network in the US has more than doubled in size, and as of the time of filming this show, EV charging stations across the US are being installed at a blistering pace, with 1,000 new charging stations, both level 2 and fast, getting commissioned every single week. 
With the average age of cars on the road getting older and older, Consumer Reports has just published a brand new survey focused on the reliability of cars between 5 and 10 years old. And while Lexus and Toyota sit atop the charts, Tesla languishes near the very bottom. Consumer Reports cites data from members who owned 2014 through 2019 model year cars and says that owners of 2014 and 2015 Model S cars reported requiring multiple fixes for their vehicles, including failures for the drivetrain, battery pack and infotainment. At the same time, Consumer Reports notes that because EVs are very different to ICE vehicles, it may be that EVs, including Teslas, which have sat higher on its reliability surveys for newer models, may remain trouble-free for a longer period before problems occur. But then when they reach a certain age, those failures are much more dire and more common. It says it will continue to monitor the data for possible trends. Over the weekend, a fire broke out at Rivian's normal Illinois production facility that burned for several hours before being extinguished. But while initial reports suggested the fire was inside the facility, it's since become clear that the fire took place in the parking lot, where a fire spread between several dozen Rivian vehicles that sources suggest were either set aside for scrapping or repair. Rivian has said in a statement that it's investigating the cause of the fire, but reiterated that the production facility itself was unaffected by the blaze and that there were no reported injuries. The reports from the ground suggest that the vehicles which were destroyed were already separated from the rest of the vehicles in the lot, which helped prevent spread to production vehicles awaiting delivery. Of course, when we know more, we'll share. Hyundai held its official 2024 CEO Investor Day this week, at which the firm laid out its plans for the next year, for both Hyundai and Genesis brand vehicles. And despite having quite the competitive edge in the marketplace thanks to the jointly owned EGMP platform developed with sister brand Kia, Hyundai confirmed that it's also working to introduce new hybrid and range-extended EV vehicles in the coming years, with North America and China due to get a new range-extended EV model in the very near future. At the same time, however, However, it's not all bad news for EVs. Hyundai confirmed a seven-seat, three-row Ioniq 9 SUV is coming to market very soon and reiterated its commitment to a target of selling two million electric vehicles per year globally by 2030. That target, set last year, was increased from Hyundai's original 1.87 million vehicle target. As Europe introduces tariffs on Chinese-made EVs designed to try and even the playing field in its marketplace, Chinese automakers are starting to execute strategies to avoid said tariffs. We've already seen BYD and many other brands explore the possibility of establishing European and North American production facilities, and this week, Xpeng and MG appeared to make their own contingency plans to avoid those tariffs. As reported midweek by Bloomberg, Xpeng is already in the initial phase of selecting a new location in the EU for a new EV production facility with plans to quickly ramp up production of European models. MG, meanwhile, is looking to expand its Thailand production facilities in order to make European market models there rather than in China. With enough cash to make rapid changes, this just goes to show that Chinese automakers are very prepared to think laterally. Since the new government took over at the end of last year and gutted all EV incentives, not to mention introducing a new road usage charge for EVs, we've seen more and more automakers backtrack on Kiwi EV plans. This week, Renault became the latest, ending its plans to sell all passenger cars in Naotearoa, including EVs, stating instead that it's going to focus exclusively on commercial vehicle sales, which does include vehicles like the Renault Master, Traffic and Kangoo. Announced late on Friday, the news is a major blow to anyone who had been hoping to see the Renault 5 or Renault Megane e-tech in Aotearoa. And while the Renault Zoe hasn't been available in Aotearoa since 2021 because crash tests, it's yet more proof that unless the government supports EV adoption, automakers just won't be buggered to keep selling EVs. And that makes me very angry, as I'm sure it does to you. Be sure to write to your elected critter, eh? Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are, and you are in Aotearoa, and you want something that isn't a Renault, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information. You need to pick a car that's right for you. It includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV, charging, and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today.
In order to get hardened petrol heads and gear jammers into the EV world, some automakers have leaned heavily into fake engine noises and faux digital shifters to replace the feel of gas cars. But while Porsche is one of the many automakers to pipe in fake quasi sci-fi inspired noises into the cabin, if the driver so wishes, it has confirmed this week that it's not interested in adding any kind of faux gear shifting shenanigans to its vehicles. Talking to journalists in Australia this week, Porsche development driver Lars Kern said that having tested the faux gear shifting of the EGMP based vehicles like the Ionic 5N, the brand believes there's, quote, no reason to simulate what has been in the past, end quote. Given that Porsche EVs are hands down some of the best driving EVs on the market today, where high tech insides don't get in the way of driving pleasure, I am sure many fans will be pleased to hear Porsche saying no to this particular option. And finally, the way post is delivered around the world varies a massive amount from country to country, with some places relying on Shanks Pony, some on vans and cars, and in some parts of the world, still on horseback. But Australia Post has just announced a new partnership with Kiwi firm Ubico to replace some of the 5,000 Honda CT1110 motorcycles on its fleet with all-electric Ubico 2x2s, modified to meet the needs of the Australian Post. There's a new larger rear-wheel motor, a 62 kilowatt our battery pack, and this allows Australia Post to electrify both urban routes and more remote rural routes in small towns that were traditionally challenging for three-wheel electric delivery vehicles to meet. I am so grateful to see a Kiwi firm helping another country get its postal service greener. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from the channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it's high time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual, although I will be in Canada, so it will be a slightly different show. And in the meantime, do check out other videos on our channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.